The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Friday morning. It's Jobs Friday, and we got a beat. We got markets higher across the board. I'm going to get a recording going, folks. We got all four markets at higher prices, all time highs across the board. You're looking at an SP right now catching a lift. All the markets catching a lift on a strong jobs number. S&P's up almost another half a percent. You're approaching 4,700 on the S&P's trading right now, up 20 points at 46.94. NASDAQ 100. See the volatility overnight, 8.30 a.m. We're a bit higher on that number as well, up 61 points right now in the NASDAQ 100. That's four-tenths percent as well. Dow up 133 points, 36,142. And how about that Russell? Up 21 points, nine-tenths percent in the Russell, 24.22. Bitcoin holding steady right near about 62,000, 61,840. We jump over to crude, right near $80 at 79.61. Gold contract up $2 this morning at 17.95. Silver down three pennies at 23.80. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds on jobs day and uh, flat action pretty much. The 10 year negative three ticks at 131.06. We're talking about a yield right now of 1.52% on the 10 year. The 30 year right now positive by 11 ticks at 161.16 and for a market that just will not go down folks a vix yesterday hitting 14 we got 1519 today in the volatility index all right let's jump right into it in the jobs number 100 excuse me 531,000 non-farm payrolls increased for the month of October uh, estimate was about 450,000 you have an unemployment rate falling to 4.6 percent market had been looking for about 4.7 percent there's a bunch of revisions in here as well they talk about October's gains represented a sharp pickup from September which gained 312,000 jobs after the 194,000 saw quite a revision. Important to remember, right? 194,000, market said, ah, 200,000, I guess, I guess that gets it done. We had an increase, no, we actually had an increase of 312,000 um, for the month of September. Getting lost in the months there for a moment. Uh, nonetheless, you look where we are in terms of where we gotta make up. We're now within about 5 million, 4.2 million is the exact number in terms of employment, you look to February 2020, we had 152.5 million people on payrolls. Right now, we're at a number of 148.3. Okay, so you're talking about 4.2 million jobs you got to make up just to get back to where we were in February of 2020. But what you have to keep in mind, folks, is that there should be organic growth over the period of two years, right? That's just getting back to employment numbers of two years ago. Of course, the great uh, resignation going on in terms of people stepping out of the workforce, reevaluating what's important in life. The unemployment rate drop came with a labor force partition rate, participation rate holding steady at 61.6 percent. That's 1.7 percentage points below February of 2020. There's what I'm talking about, right? It's a big number, almost two percentage points below where we were at in February 2020. And that is just shy of three million fewer Americans considered part of the workforce. At the same time, survey of households showed job holders rising by 359,000, uh, leaving the unemployment level about 4.7 million below its pre-pandemic levels. Uh, however, revisions show that the numbers for those months, yeah, so weren't quite as dismal. Along with the boost of September, August final reading came up another 117,000. So think about that, right? August is up 117,000. September up more than 117,000 in terms of what was first reported. And then you have this number coming in at 531,000, which is almost 100,000 bigger than the market was looking for. Uh, quite strong numbers to put it lightly folks and we'll see how the market reacts to it but right away you're talking about higher prices and it is remarkable these markets you take a look at the s p folks i talked about it on my program yesterday uh if you had said to me to kick off october geez how long do you think it will take 
before we could potentially make it back within this uptrend channel if we ever do. And do you see that happening by year's end? The probability of that happening, in my opinion, and I don't think I would have seen the market cascading dramatically lower, but the probability that we would have traded up 400 plus points in the span of just over a month. You're talking about a 10 to 12 percent pop after all the fear rhetoric talking about where we were in September. Right. We were talking about whether it was all the earnings were going to disappear. It was going to be supply shortages. It was going to be supply chain issues. Uh, it was going to be finding employees, et cetera. Nonetheless, these markets talk about some strength, folks. I mean, look at where we've been since October 13th. To put it there's October 13th in, in the charts. We were trading at 43.18. What do we have on there? Four red days since October 13th, and they're marginal red days at best. The worst day you're talking about there had a high to low of barely 33 points in the S&Ps. Meanwhile, we've risen over that time to the tune of almost 400 points since October 13th. Can't overstate the action that we have going on in these markets. Checking out the queues right now. Now, the queues, I pulled this up on my program yesterday. You might be blowing out of this channel line. It's the first time that we have had a real breakout of this channel line. Look at where we're going from. We're talking about going from September of last year. All right, the acceleration to upward prices began in November. So you're going back 14 months, folks. Okay, we've been on this uptrend channel, and man, it's quite an uptrend channel. I mean, you gotta be happy in the NASDAQ 100 at this type of elevation. And guess what? The market's saying it's not even good enough. The queues breaking out of this uptrend channel, remarkable. We'll see where we go from there. We'll see if we can hold that on the open. But nonetheless, you get the queues right now pushing 400. We hit a high of 399.20. For some context, the queues traded down to 164 for the pandemic lows, and we're gonna be pushing 400 folks. You came into 2020 at 212. If you were in the NASDAQ 100, you doubled your investment over two years from the start of 2020. You did have to weather through the pandemic collapse in terms of going from a price point of 237 down to 164, but it's all been upward action since then. And you see the channel line, this is on a weekly. We were talking about it on a daily. That's on a weekly. It's a strong channel, folks, and we're breaking out of it in the queues, which not sure what to make out of that just yet, because if we break out of that to the upside, man, you're talking about valuations that might get a little bit crazy, to say the least. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks as we kick things off. We got a lot of earnings that we're going to get to this morning as well. We got Amazon shares basically flat. Amazon's been on fire the last two days, man. You're talking about trading up $200. $200. We were at a low of $32.97. On Wednesday, we reach a high of $34.98. Yesterday, we're trading right now at 34.76 for Amazon shares. Apple shares this morning uh, up a bit, up about 50 cents to 151.48. We jump over to Google shares. Google trading just shy of 3,000. We hit 29.99 yesterday. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares. You talk about a rocket ship. 12.33 right now for Tesla. You're up about four bucks. Uh, basically pushing all-time highs for Tesla as well. We jump over to a little social media. You talk about a rocket ship as well. Facebook. 335. Now, where are we for? You know, this could be a dead cat bounce, folks. I've talked about it many times. Um, Zuckerberg probably has a good plan here. You know, the future is going to be AI. It's almost remarkable to imagine that we're going to be, you know, putting on suits, putting on Oculus goggles, uh, being immersed in virtual reality. But you're talking about five to 10 years down the road with massive amount of capital to get that done. And uh, that might just hit Facebook shares. We'll see. But Facebook, nonetheless, up about four bucks today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with all those earnings we got cooking today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. It's Jobs Friday. We got a bunch of earnings we're going to go through. We're going to kick it off with Pfizer, though. Pfizer talking about that they got a pill that is 89% effective against, and I'm going to get the verbiage correct here in terms of how they put it, uh, cuts the risk of hospitalization or death by 89%. That's a new uh, COVID-19 pill used with an HIV drug. That's remarkable in terms of the pop that you have here, right? You are up pushing almost 10% for this company, okay? You jump over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform, you scroll down to check out the market capitalization. We're talking about a $270 billion company, folks, popping 10% on this. They have a whole portfolio of drugs. When you think about the move that is going on in this equity right now, it could be a game changer. You saw Merck get hit in a big way as well to the upside and the same way. Now they got a competitor and Merck trading lower in terms of Pfizer having a pill uh, to back this up. There was the, nope, that was their earnings. I think this was the acceleration September 30th where they came out with their own pill that might be able to cut down on hospitalizations and deaths for COVID. I mean, we get something like that, folks, combined with vaccinations, it's a game changer because the biggest problem of all of this, okay, in terms of the whole pandemic is hospitals getting overrun. Uh, my biggest frustration with people saying that the vaccine's personal choice is that in Florida, we had a number of different people with ailments, whether it's people with cancer, uh, a number of ailments like I'm talking about couldn't even get the surgeries they needed because hospitals were full of COVID patients, predominantly unvaccinated. You start getting pills that can just be given to people, and 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 that is something that they don't even need to go to the hospital for. We could see, you know, uh, really just helping us get over the hump. It's not just vaccinations. It's going to be something that because we know vaccinations, folks. Uh, I encourage you talk to your doctor. Don't take it from me, okay? But don't take it from Facebook either in terms of where you find your information. Uh, they do work. They are effective. They're not fail-proof, though. And that is why you're seeing these types of pills being so important, especially for vulnerable populations um, that could be impacted even when you're vaccinated. For Colin Powell comes to mind. Unfortunate, right? In terms of vaccinations, not fail-proof. But nonetheless, you got Pfizer trading out $4. That's going to be a big impact, both Merck and Pfizer. You're seeing it happen. Um, they're not even taking more people in their trial right now as they got 89% in high risk adults who've been exposed to the virus, the second antiviral pill behind Merck. All right, now let's kick into some earnings or 
should I say, lack of earnings when it comes to Peloton. Peloton shares, you think that chart looks a little bit tough, folks? Well, it's going to look a lot tougher on the open because we're going to open down $30. $30. Excuse me. I almost can't overstate it. I got to back this chart up a while to see where we're going to be at 56 bucks, which is going to be back at prices, excuse me, that we have not seen in Peloton since June of 20. 20. Talk about giving it all back. And they deserve to give it all back with these numbers, folks, because three months ago, they were talking about taking in revenue of $5.2 billion. They cut that by a billion dollars down to $4.2 billion. Excuse me. Uh, tumbling Friday, at-home fitness equipment maker slashed annual sales forecast by as much as a billion dollars. The one that stuck out in here as well, and I wonder if they have it in terms of the number of rides the number of activities, they don't have it in here. I'm going to find it because the average user was doing something like 20 to 25 workouts per month over the last three, six, nine months. They're doing 15 workouts a month now. It makes sense when you think about, folks, we're stuck at home. You got nothing to do. You got a Peloton sitting in um, your spare office. Yeah, you might use it, right? Nowadays, you're not even trapped at home, right? You're probably comfortable whether it's dining out, dining outside of some sort. We're fortunate in Florida. We still got weather where you can do that. Um, but it's a whole game changer in a big way. And you got price targets across the board. There's still some you know, big numbers. Credit Suisse is still talking about 112 down from 148. Um, you're trading at 56 right now. Even when this article was written, you were trading at 68. The slide is continuing. They expect to have between 3.35 and 3.45 million connected subscribers. By the end of June, they were looking for 3.63 million. That's a reduction of about 200,000. Uh, JP Morgan cuts it to 90 from 138. I'm gonna pull up some more numbers for Peloton though, because the one that struck me most is not only are they selling a lot less bikes, but the bikes they're selling, people aren't using. And if that starts becoming a trend, it's gonna be really hard for them to have that recurring revenue for the subscriptions that they're dealing with um so it's it's remarkable when you look at that across the board but peloton they're going to pay the price today i remember when this thing went public man they were just in timing is everything folks in life sometimes um they go public they were down at 17 bucks on the covid lows you came into it at about 20 to 30 dollars and i remember talking to my dad doing the program saying um I don't see a future for this company because it's so expensive and there's so many competitors that are always in the fitness arena to sell a $2,000 bike that you then have to subscribe to for $45 a month to use the service as somebody that loves biking, folks. And again, I'm in Florida, so I have the opportunity if I want to bike to almost be outside 12 months a year um, to bike. Can't do that in many parts of the country, so I get that. But you don't need to buy a $2,000 stationary bike, folks. There's going to be competitors. And you see Peloton already, right, cutting the price of their basic bike by $400 recently. They're trying to add new products as fast as they can, probably seeing the writing on the wall, that the valuations they were dealing with obviously – uh, a little bit elevated in terms of what they deserved as you're now trading at $56 down from 171 to start this year. That's down from 117 just back in July. That's down from 118 just in September. If you're in margin on this equity, you are wiped out in less than two months. Think about that, okay? If you are in margin, you are wiped out on this equity in two months. I mean, you're going to get some margin calls probably today. I mean, look where this equity was trading at from June to September. That may be the reason why this thing is continuing to drop. Let's put it on a five minute to see the action. You trade to under a low 56.20, you're trading to 57.89. But uh, yeah, that's a complete wipeout on margin, let alone margin calls. Pretty ridiculous when you look at that equity. And yes, they do have a future, but I'm not sure that future is where even the valuation stands right now. We're all familiar with exercise equipment and the commercials and the marketing, right? Whether it's Chuck Norris um, pushing, what was he pushing? What was he pushing? Ah, I should know. Shame on me. The billions of dollars they spent uh, pushing that one piece of product. I uh, can't believe it's failing me. But you get the point. There's a continual cycle of exercise equipment that runs and Peloton wants to be the staple stationary bike to charge you 1500 bucks and then have you charging $50 a day. 
it's a tough business to be in at those valuations. Um, yeah, you got the ab roller, you know, there's this exactly, man. You got Suzanne Summers with the thigh master, right? Going all the way back. Um, exactly. Chuck Norris doesn't do push ups, he pushes the world down. Gotta love those Chuck Norris jokes, man. Keep them coming, keep them coming, Dan. Uh, all right, folks, we'll jump back. We got the SPs charging higher, man. 46.99, NASDAQ up 82 points right now. We are within nine points of all time highs pre market. The Dow up 164. Folks, we're gonna open at basically all-time highs to the tick across the board on all four indices. Uh, remarkable action on Jobs Friday. We'll get into the numbers a little bit more when we get back. We got a lot of numbers to get into. Airbnb, they beat in a big way. They're up another $8 from where they closed at yesterday. Airbnb up to 186 from 178. We got Yelp numbers. Yelp is trading higher as well, up to about $41 right now from 39. We got Uber numbers out as well, up to 47.50. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and we got markets opening at record across the board. S and P's up 24, Nasdaq 100 up 67. We got the Dow up 187, and the Russell up 26. Taking a look at the Russell, it's been quite a few days for the Russell. Talk about breaking out of this consolidation. This is a weekly I have up. You go back to February of this year, February of this year, you trade into that consolidation area in between about 2100 and 2350. And man. 
you got to say, I mean, how do you like that acceleration in a big way to break out of that consolidation, folks? You got a weekly bar from a low of 22.99. We're pushing 24.25 right now. You're talking about a 125 point bar in that Russell 2000 accelerating higher. All right, getting back into uh, Peloton. Here we go. This is the number I wanted to talk about real quick. Connected Fitness subscribers completed. 16.6 .6 workouts per month, not bad. That's more than a workout every other day, not bad. Uh, on average, but a drop from 20.7 workouts a year earlier, and they had 25 workouts in some quarter as well. Uh, that's a huge drop off of the people using their product. Now, ordinarily, if you sell people a bike, You've sold them their product, and you don't need to worry about how much they use it, right? But they're not in that business, folks. They're in the business of recurring revenue on top of selling bikes, and that's where you may see an impact when you talk about if you're not using the product. Uh, and that is the reason why I never really even thought about purchasing uh, a Peloton bike, because I couldn't rationalize in my own brain paying more for a subscription service to Peloton Okay, then I would have uh, for my gym, LA Fitness. I think I pay twenty five bucks a month, and I get to use a pool, uh, a gym, and all that stuff. And for Peloton, I got to buy a two thousand dollar bike, and then I got to pay forty five dollars for the right to use it. That one just made my head spin. If you start using it less, you may see people cutting the cord um, in terms of. Maybe not cutting the cord, but cutting their recurring revenue on Peloton in a big way. Uh, so check that out. Keep your eye on that one. But oof, I don't know. Uh, I got no Peloton right now, and I'm not buying it at these prices, folks, because the pain might not be over. I mean, think about the revenue cut. And we're going to jump around to some of the other equities because we got a lot to go today. But yeah, Peloton opening right near the lows and holding near that level. Um, think about the revenue cut, right, on a percentage basis. 20% of their revenue just disappeared in three months on a yearly basis from 5.2 billion to 4.2 billion that would be like one of the bigger companies going from 52 billion to 42 billion not what you want to see over a three-month period uh as they really missed the ball on that forecast as the world is changing and they underestimated the impact that opening would have on their shares all right we jump around what are we going to jump to next let's jump to pinterest so pinterest beats on earnings and revenue even as monthly user numbers drops, always interesting when you get that type of action in terms of a beat, but these social media companies, it's all about how many eyeballs you have in terms of their future numbers, and there you see it, right? They beat on the earnings, they beat on the revenue, the market spikes higher, but guess what? Then it comes out that they got less people in the door, uh, and that is not what you want to see. Pinterest pretty much flat right now on their numbers. Last night, we jumped to Airbnb. Let's see where we are. There's some action for you up to 192 Airbnb. We jump over to their numbers, strong numbers. How about profit surging 280% in the third quarter? Um, my dad, Tom, he's been talking about this a lot. They are a de facto hotel. He nails it, man. Um, you know, we're looking at maybe taking a family trip, maybe looking at some Airbnbs, uh, domestic travel, maybe a little bit bigger currently because international travel not really something that's possible for many people especially not possible even some countries not taking people just yet uh airbnb said it expects vaccination progress and the recovery of international travel to lead growth in the fourth quarter and new year getting into the numbers not sure why it's not comparable to estimates but they make a buck 22 they beat on revenue by 200 million i mean percentage wise again percentage wise that's a 10 percent beat excuse me they go from 2.05 billion to 2.24 79.7 million nights and experiences booked in the third quarter, a slight decrease from the second quarter, still up 29% year over year. Now, I wonder how their quarters compare, right? Maybe this is a little bit of a tougher quarter versus the summer quarter where everyone's doing a lot of traveling, although you do get some of the summer action in the quarter they just contributed to. Uh, highest ever revenue and net income in the third quarter. So there you go. Even though urban and cross-border travel have not returned, to pre-pandemic levels. Um, Airbnb accepts revenue 1.39 billion to 1.48 billion in the fourth quarter in line with analyst expectations. Uh, average daily rates for the company dropped to 149 from roughly 161 in the last quarter. Gross booking value, which the company uses to track host earnings, service fees, cleaning fees, and taxes, 11.89 billion, up 48% 
from year over year, but fell slightly. The market was looking for 12.31. I mean, they are not cheap. That's the one thing they're going to face, folks. As we're looking at some of these places we're thinking about going, uh, you're talking about some crazy fees and, and service numbers that are in there. You, we're all familiar if you've looked at them, folks. Um, but nonetheless, you know, it's it's a different world right now. And when it comes time to book vacations, people are looking at those types of stays just like they're looking at hotels right now and maybe even more so depending on what type of vacation you're planning. OK, let's keep jumping down the line and see what we got going on. How about Uber? Uber revenue up 72 percent from last year. But the Diddy state contributes to a big loss. Yeah, so much for that faring well for the company. Uh, Uber shares. Let's see how they're opening up. Catching a bid up to about 47 bucks. You're up 3.8% for Uber shares. Uber really been struggling recently, struggling to find a bid. You accelerate from 38 bucks in September up to a high of almost $49. You trade back down to almost that 618, the 4219. We've caught a bid from there. That was just November 2nd. So you're up from about 42 bucks to 47 right now. But getting into the numbers, Net loss of $2.4 billion, largely attributed to a drop in the value of its investment holdings, particularly Diddy. Now, Diddy shares. Well, right? Yeah, check out that thing. They go IPO at 18. And I forget, what what are they at? They had like a 20% stake or something like that in Diddy. Maybe they get into it in here. Uh, come on. All right, we'll pull it up. But they, uh, they ended up seeding. The land in China to Diddy took an equity ownership in Diddy for that deal. They pushed Diddy out to the public earlier this year, and then China clamps down on the whole IPO market, and you got a collapse in that from 18 down to eight dollars. So that weighing on their earnings. But getting back into some of the numbers, gross bookings 9.9 .9 billion, delivery gross bookings 12.8. Really remarkable, right? When you look at these companies, delivery. How Uber has just transformed the way that we order food, folks. And of course, you got DoorDash in there, right? You got Instacart with groceries. You have a bunch of companies competing in that sector. But Uber is a ride sharing company to many people. And I don't think a lot of people would realize that delivery gross bookings vastly outweigh their mobility gross bookings now. Um, both of those numbers, though, look at what they're growing year over year. Last year, not really a fair comp in terms of the world, much different than it is now, thankfully. Uh, but nonetheless, decent numbers. The market likes it. And Uber was already up. You saw that uh, acceleration on the second. That pop having to do with Lyft numbers out earlier this week. So expectations already a little higher. You came into Lyft earnings with Uber trading about 42. So keep in context there that you come into Lyft earnings, it's already elevated. Even with the elevated expectations of Lyft, you're still up 4% on their numbers. We'll check out Lyft this morning. Lyft shares trading up a bit, up another 5%, probably on those Uber numbers as they're both uh, doing better than expected. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll come back. We got more companies to jump through. I'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Pulling back the charts we got going on here. This S&P, folks, check out the action. We're now at 35 points. You look at this on a daily. I talked about the trend line. Remarkable action. You're talking about, I'm just going to extend this trend line to the right here. And you're talking about 47.66 is the top of that channel line. We're only 60 points away from it. Remarkable action. As recently as October 1st, S&Ps, I've said it many times, you're talking about now pushing 450 points above that price level. 11% the S&P 500 index has risen since the beginning of October. This is why no one's selling, folks. You talk about missing out, fear of missing out. You sell in the September month thinking that uh, you're getting ahead of a rough earnings season potentially with the Fed tapering, and you just missed out on an 11% acceleration in the S&P 500 in the span of just over a month. You don't get those types of moves very often, folks. Uh, remarkable resilience in this market. Can't overstate it. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. We're going to talk DraftKings in a little bit. DraftKings. Now, Penn National has all sorts of problems going on, whether it's their earnings or their CEO. We're not going to get into them, but DraftKings, they get some problems as well. Uh, wider than expected loss, revenue fall short, fell short of expectations. They did raise the midpoint of their fiscal year guidance and said it expected a strong 2022, uh, but a little light on the details there. DraftKings right now clawing back some of those losses actually on the open. Check that out. So you're flat with their earnings to about 45 bucks now. You want to talk about some woes, man. The cannabis sector. Watch out, folks. It just does not end on this. Canopy down 6.2%. Uh, these pot stocks, my dad was saying, I'm going to steal his line from last night. They have gotten smoked. They've gotten smoked big time. Look at this chart. My goodness. I, I mean, you're now below where we were in September of last year, folks. Okay? That is remarkable. Didn't see that one happening. Next stop might be nine dollars. There's no other place on this chart, folks, that it might go to uh, from 56 bucks. Now that was a little bit of Reddit fueled action as well in the beginning of the year. Get up to 56.50, and it has been a one-way ticket to lower prices for Canopy. Their numbers, talking about Canopy, uh, getting the chart up here. Inventory write down delays profitability. The market cares about profits, folks. It cares about in a big way. Uh, they write down $70 million worth of cannabis inventory after demand was less than expected in Canada, Canada, Canopy's biggest market. Gross margin of negative 54%. That is not a good gross margin, folks. Um, a loss of $163 million in adjusted earnings before interest depreciation and amortization uh and analysts were only looking for a loss of 50 million according to estimates compiled by bloomberg it's yet down 2.7 percent pre-market the stocks declined 46 percent this year through thursday 
Uh, it's declined 46% this year, folks, but that is going from where you opened up in at $24. I don't think it does it justice to see the slide that it's had from 56.50 at the top end of that range. Remarkable action to the downside for Canopy. Jumping back to some of the other stocks with action this morning. Let's see. Expedia, they're out with their numbers. 353 a share, well above a buck 65. Revenue higher than expected. Travel services company benefiting from the surge in travel demand. I mean, these travel stocks, right? Watch out, man. Travel. Everybody wants to be traveling. Expedia up 12.5%. You're going to be pushing all-time highs of 187. I believe it's all-time highs. Let's make sure. Yes, it sure is. All-time highs of 187 made earlier this year. Let's check back into Airbnb. Yeah, continuing to run. I thought so, man. 196.95. They just had some really strong numbers. Always intriguing, folks. And this is why. If you're trading the markets, folks, if you're trading earnings, if you're trading options, I encourage you to watch Fast Market at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the TD Ameritrade Network do an outstanding job trading and setting up hypothetical trades in the option market because it's so cool that so often on these earnings companies, folks, the one drawback of trading options of earnings is that you can't trade unless the markets are open, right? 9.30 till 4. That's when options trade. Uh, what's interesting there is that when you think about it, that's something that's probably going to be remedied in the future. There's no reason why options can't trade 24 hours a day like other uh, equities now do, indexes, futures now do, at least five days a week. Uh, but right now, they only trade in market hours. And there's always the possibility that when those markets open at 930, that you get a move one way or the other. And you're seeing it right here, man. They got some strong numbers. And meanwhile, you opened at 185. You've already gained about 10 bucks up to 194.67 for Airbnb shares. Let's jump around to some of the other companies with earnings. You got Yelp shares giving it back. Same deal, right? Sometimes you got to wait for the true reflection of supply and demand. Yelp actually negative on their numbers. Now, did I have Yelp numbers up here? Where are they? Come on, I had them up somewhere. I was looking at them this morning. Okay, I'll pull them up as well. They had some pretty decent numbers because they were trading higher last night to 43 bucks. Uh, they held that basically overnight till this morning, and then this morning falls out of bed. You get Yelp down about 2% right now for their earnings. Canada Goose, the outwear maker, outerwear maker, there we go, reported an unexpected profit for the latest quarter. Uh, they were higher pre-market. We'll see if they hold it. Better than expected revenue and raising the full year forecast. Forecast, so important. Much more important than what they did in the last three years. It's seeing an indication of a strong winter season. Everybody getting their Canada goose. There you go. Up 17%. There's a pop for you. Checking out this thing on a weekly basis. Down to 12 bucks during the COVID lows. You had a high of about 50 bucks earlier this year, and you're going to be pushing those highs right now. Canada Goose uh, raising the forecast, beating on earnings, beating on revenue, talking about a strong quarter, up 18% on their numbers. Got to love that. Live Nation. They're up 5.4% pre-market. Let's see. Return to profit amid sales surge as live events returned. Can't wait to attend some good concerts. Uh, concerts, one of my favorite things to attend. There you go. Up 16.8%, 16.3%, excuse me. And always remarkable when you compare it to the pre-pandemic levels of $71. I mean, this stock's been on fire. At the beginning of 2017, you were trading at 27 bucks. That's like a four or five bagger since then. It's been a one-way ship um, on this price. Now, it's interesting here, right? You are breaking above. Even if you just look at this channel line, because I was looking at this just a couple days ago as they were coming out with their numbers. I mean, look at this channel line that we're kind of coming into, right? You take out COVID in there, and you see that we were there. I mean, you're just crushing above that, right? That was a pretty solid channel. You could make the case that we were in from 2017, 18, and 19. You resume that channel. Whether you had the highs of March, you were up on those highs coming into earnings, and they just blow it away and putting this on a longer-term chart. Yeah, Live Nation, they are accelerating higher. And I imagine, folks, people are going to look at concerts and venues and sporting events in a different way than they ever have for their lifetime, folks. That was taken away from us for a period of almost two years. Uh, I I'm going to try and get to them all from now on. I imagine many people are feeling the same way. As I said, concerts, live music, almost nothing like live music, folks, no matter what kind of music you're talking about. If it's good live music, I'm up for it. And it uh, looks like I'm not the only one with Live Nation crushing it today, up big time. 
Look at this Dow, man. Dow up nine tenths percent, thirty six thousand three twenty five in the Dow. We got the S and P's above forty seven hundred. We got the Russell up one point eight percent right now. Crude seventy nine seventy five. We got gold up five dollars right now. Let's check out the VIX fifteen oh eight on its way to a fourteen handle. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Checking out the markets. s and is up 31 points right now, 47.04. Can't see this market really giving up much action today. NASDAQ a little weak. I mean, NASDAQ's just been on fire. I talked about you. Check out the Qs, right? Checking out the Qs. You put it on a daily, well above the channel line that we've been in. you got to go back more than a year. We've been in since August almost of last year. The Qs pushing above 400, folks. Remarkable action in those Qs. Dow up 310 points. Check out the Dow. Dow could be making a bid to get back in this uptrend channel. Got to get above 37,000 to make that happen. But boy, we've just risen from a price point at the end of September. Check it out, folks. 2,000 Dow points. Did you hear that? The low. No, 3,000. 3,000 Dow points from the low of the week of September 27th. I was taking the close. 3,000 Dow points from the lows. Uh, this market, watch out, folks, man. It is amazing. And the Russell right now up 1.7%. 
Checking out some of the companies that had earnings that we went through. Let's see how they're all holding up right now. You got Airbnb up about 10% right now. Yelp shares had given it back and they stay down there, down about half a percent. Uber shares trading higher, up 7.4%. We have some new Uber, Uber in my newsletter for disclosure, Rocket Equities and Options. DraftKings out with their numbers this morning. Look at that claw back, back to basically flat after being lower below 40 bucks. And cannabis stocks, watch out for cannabis stocks, folks, down 6.7%. <clears throat> at some point they will find a bid because cannabis is going to be around uh the trend of legalization is not going backwards in the u.s but boy profitability not even close some i had never imagined this thing would have been back to here but that's why you have stops folks um i think i might have tried to get into this equity and rocket equities options around 23 bucks but guess what we had a stop. You got to have a stop. You're playing with any of these. You got to have a stop. You want to be in the travel stocks. You want some. Um, look at look at Delta Airlines up six point four percent. You're going to see all these because the travel stocks look at United up five point five. Let's see if the cruise ships are reacting. Norwegian up five point six right now. Carnival up seven point seven, folks. Uh, put your stops in, though, on some of these equities, man. Watch out. Should be an interesting day in the markets, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman up next. He did his program at 8 a.m. this morning, but we're going to replay it right now. Live programming after that, folks. Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes at 5 at 1 o'clock today. Dave White at 2. Tom O'Brien at 3. Have a great Friday, everybody.